Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman and joining me this morning is Paige. How you doing, Paige? Good, how are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, Paige, we, we talk about sort of the mind the gap. We, we, we talk about something that the Christians believe that, that's sometimes pushed on by the rest of the world. And we, we try to find a, a good way to talk about it, a, a good way to explain it, a good way to meet somebody in the middle without actually giving up what we believe. Um, so what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to talk about prayer. Okay. So yeah, I can see a lot of places where uh, prayer gets sort of a bad rep. Um, because I, I mean, honestly, it's, it's something that I, I think a lot of Christians themselves don't entirely understand what it is or, or how it works. They, they only know that they're supposed to be doing it. And when you tell somebody to do something and you don't tell them how it usually actually goes pretty poorly anyway. So what's a prayer? So um, like a general definition of a prayer is like a request of, for help or um, an expression of thanks to God or in secular society, a higher power. Just something that is like, all right, here's my petition, sending it up, hoping good things happen. Right. And, and um, it's, it's okay to sort of acknowledge that people pray to things that aren't Jesus. In fact, that's the whole point of like, well, uh, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. And the second commandment that you're actually supposed to use God's name when you pray, praise and give thanks that that we need these these commandments show us that we're actually willing to seek help just about anywhere. Um, and the, the thing for that, it, it's called idolatry. Uh, that bad. Um, it, it's an important sort of thing to sort of recognize when we talk about prayer, the, the, uh, the, the, the thing on our mind isn't just what we want, but who we're praying to, right? Right, exactly. Because I mean, well, if, if the only thing that you want is, is healing, um, well, sell your soul to the devil for healing or pray to Jesus for healing. And if they're the same thing to you, we should probably talk, right? Yeah, that, that's kind of an issue. Okay, so um, we, we want to recognize then prayer is, is chiefly about what God is, who God is. It's, it's a revelation of his character and, and in, in a way sort of allows you to have a place for your worry or your fear or your unknowns uh, or, or even your gratitude right along with God who has an active will and something about himself that you should know. Chiefly, we, we are taught to pray our Father who art in heaven. Because there, there's something that we start to recognize uh, in prayers that God loves you and he wants to take care of you. And that changes everything, right? Right. Because like, um, if you know who you're praying to and to us, it's our father in heaven, like, then there's that extra security that he hears our prayer and he's actually there on our side listening. He promised to listen. He promised to help and he promised to hear. Right. And if he actually is our father in heaven, too, the other joyful part of that is even if you forget to pray, he's still your father in heaven. It, because the, the thing that changes uh, what's going on around you isn't you and, and your your petition or your your ask or your whatever what you want to sort of call it. But it's a God who loves you and has promised to take care of you. Exactly. Because like I feel like sometimes with prayer, like we kind of forget the relational aspect and just kind of use God as a cosmic vending machine where we're just kind of sending up and being like, God, this is what I want. I really, really want it. I really, really need it. Like you need to change this and I need you to do it now. And that totally flips the relationship of what we have promised in prayer with God, our father and that relational aspect and just turning it more into a business transaction. Right. That's that's gross to begin with for for family. Um, but it, it also gets sort of doubly hard because if all God is is a vending machine and he doesn't give you chips like half the time, um, what does the world think of that? Right. They think that it's an unanswered prayer. Like you tried, it didn't work. Well, your God must not be real. And it just plants that seed of doubt and it's just frankly awful. <laughs> so Right. And this is what happens when we sort of measure God by whether or not he does what I tell him to do, uh, which would sort of be like, I mean, honestly, if, if that were the case, my dog doesn't always listen to me. So my dog doesn't exist half the time. That doesn't make sense. Um, and we do it with the divine. Uh, we do this. God is real because he, he took flesh, rose from the dead after being crucified. This is this is sort of what we're basing our, our faith upon. But when we're only going to sort of minimize prayer to uh I asked for it, so give me, and now I need to prove it. I, I also understand why it, it sort of turns into 
almost like an invisible friend kind of thing, because like you almost don't want to expect too much from from prayer because you don't want to be disappointed. And so it, it, it almost gets a little bit like I don't want to say hokey, but like, give me an example. You know what I'm saying, right? Read my mind. Yeah. Like um, if you're using God or prayer as like this indiv- um, invisible friend type thing you're sending up this prayer to it doesn't really matter because he's gonna know what it is and I don't have to worry about it it's just out in the universe and whatever comes from it comes from it and it's almost along the lines of like God is a therapist too like you just send it up and it doesn't come back down ever Right. I, I, I sort of, I get that, but prayer was given to us because we have things that we're worried about. So go through the Lord's prayer and like, and examine each of those petitions and recognize we're actually praying for stuff that matters. We're not just sort of like jotting down our thoughts in a, in a sky journal. Um, I, it's, it's not that it's bad to sort of, you know, express what's going on and, and recognize that you have a, a father in heaven who, who sees it and, and works inside of it. But prayer is chiefly about going to God in need. And when we sort of get rid of that idea because we're afraid to actually ask him for things uh really at the end of the day what you end up doing is sort of downplaying the idea that you can depend on god and that's not a thing we we want to have in our own hearts let alone project out to the world right because then that kind of feeds into the idea of like prayer as the power instead of god as the power And like when you're using prayer, like I hear so often, just believe in the power of prayer and the power of prayer is what's going to help you through. It's like, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. The point is you take your petition because like we're sinful, broken, hurt people. Like we need somewhere to put that sinful, broken, hurt. You Mm -hmm. cry out to God in like with the knowledge that he hears It's not me crying out to the universe so I can fix my own problem. It's me crying out to God for his comfort and mercy. Brilliant. And that there's a difference between trusting in God and trusting in prayer, because uh, again, it's that relational aspect that you talked about. If you're trusting in prayer, it's your fault if it doesn't work because you're just doing something wrong with the prayer. But if you're trusting in God, well, then it's, it's actually his job to determine what's best for you and actually act in love. I don't want my kids to know that I always say no to them. And I don't want my kids to know that I'll always say yes to them. I want my kids to know that I'll always take care of them. And then they don't have to judge everything based on whether or not they got a pony when they asked for it. Right. I was just going to say, it's the little kid in the pony prayer. Like, I remember when I was little, like, that was my Christmas prayer. Dear God, please give me a pony this year. Yeah, that doesn't really, like, the answer was a very solid no, and as it should be, because I was not capable of taking care of a pony. Like, and that's another thing that God, like, he, he, when you pray and, like, the answer obviously was no and people think that if you get a no then oh that's not an answer but a no is a very valid answer and also is not yet so can we talk a little bit about the not yet answer because I know that's one that gets brought up a lot Sure. And I mean, that's, that's a loving response. I, I mean, sometimes it's just, it's not the right time for a thing. And so you, know, you can have dessert after dinner um, and that's the, that's the right time for it. I, I know that some people disagree, uh, but diabetes guys. Um, <laughs> all right. So tell me about not yet. Okay. So for the not yet, like we don't know our futures, but God sure does. So who are we to determine that the answer can only be now? Who are we to determine that like the answer is either going to come in this next week or it's not going to come at all? Like our prayer could be answered years in advance. And that's just for God and his loving kindness to know and for us to find out. Right. And this is our catechism actually played out. So our catechism talks about in our baptism that old Adam is daily drowned, that the new man would daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. See, old Adam can only live in the right now. It's the the, the baptized child of God that can live in eternity. And if all I can live in is right now, I don't have time for later or not yet. Um, But that's actually the sinner in me that needs to die. Um, Because I actually I have an eternity 
I, I have a God who has already sealed to me eternity and promised to get me there somehow. So even if I, I'm struggling with the today part of it, there is more than just today. It's good to be reminded that there's more than just today if today feels like it's the end of the world. Right. Yeah, there's definite comfort in that as well. Brilliant. The thing I want to talk about about prayer is uh, sort of the pushback against it publicly. So, you know, whenever there's there's sort of a, a national tragedy or, or um, something awful happens, uh, the, the socials blow up with, you know, thoughts and prayers and, and all of this. And it, it's sort of that nice thing to say. Um, I, I guess I have a problem with using I'll pray for you as a way to close down an awkward conversation where you just don't know what to say. So you just say, I'll pray for you. Anyway, um, because don't say that, actually pray with somebody. Like if you're going to say, I'll pray for you, stop right there and pray with them right then. Because it's prayers about comfort, not about, you know, someday maybe changing God's mind. God already works in mercy with or without that. He's died and risen long before you thought about praying. But if, if you thought that you may need to say, I'll pray for you, stop right then and pray with somebody. It's better. But um, just the idea that, that, Thoughts and prayers should be rejected because in some cases they're, they're almost used as, as an excuse not to act. So like if, if I see somebody starving and I say, I'll pray for you, that's bad, right? Definitely. You're not really helping your neighbor at all. Again, it goes back to the relationship and the re relational aspect of prayer and neighbor. Like you can pray for your neighbor, do it. You can help your neighbor in their time of need do it like just because you pray doesn't mean you can't do anything else like you can pray and then go do but there's that definite thing that especially in pop culture with um oh sending prayers to wherever this tragedy or that tragedy well what else have you done for your neighbor like that's kind of it makes prayer seem like this empty thing with no promise attached to it it's just like oh i don't want to do anything here's 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 a prayer yeah like and it, it again, it goes against what prayer is, because prayer is sort of a recognition that God wants to help here. And, and so we want to rely on his promises, because again, prayer is about comfort. It's not that I'm trying to convince God to stop being lazy and help, but I want to be reminded of all the ways that God has helped in the past and has promised to do it here. And so in the same way that God wants to help, well, you're a part of the body of Christ, and that means love your neighbor. Um, and, and sometimes just praying, because that's all you can do, is a good gift. Like there you sort of get to, to sort of have a place to put all the things you wish you could do in, in the hands of a God who has promised to work, but, but where you're able to work also do that. Exactly. Brilliant. So um, there's, there's sort of prayer. It, we go on and on, but when it comes to this, it's, it's a recognition that God is, is good and merciful. And when we start with that idea, instead of here's how to get stuff, um, it, you dodge a lot of bullets. So is there anything else we should maybe talk about for prayer before we, we close down for the day? I mean, just reminding people that prayer is not about our action. It's about God's action to us. And we're not praying under the law. Like you said, we're not praying to get stuff. We're praying under the gospel. We're praying under the promise that God has promised to hear our prayers. He has promised to help in our time of need. Like we're not just sending up prayers to this random deity that we only pray to when we want things. It's that comfort aspect like you keep talking about. Brilliant. All right, Paige, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.